uh, I have to clarify this now because some people think I mean fighting when I mean drinking. The last man standing at the bar. Andre the Giant. Uh, this is perfect time for an Andre story. First time you met Andre. Andre story. I mean, Andre the Giant. There's nobody could out drink Andre. I mean, you know, guys could drink. A lot of guys are heavy drinkers. But Andre, I mean, you know, I was blessed to be close to Andre and it's because I was a mark for him. I mean, when I first met Andre, I was just a kid in the dressing room and I warmed up to him because it, he was the coolest guy in the dressing room. He was the coolest looking. He was, he was a freak. And at first, you know, it's like in the dressing room, I wanted to try on his ring. I wanted to try on his boots. I want to try on your tights. I want to try and just put the stuff on it. Look like it's in my dad's clothes. And then, you know, it was, it was warming up, but he knew that I just liked him. I mean, you know, and he, we, him and I became really close, but Andre, when he'd travel with you, I mean, he would drink a bottle of that crown Royal on the way to the show. He had more of those little purple bags that that stuff came in and he could wrestle on, drink a whole bottle of crown Royal and wrestle. And then afterwards, when you stopped to get beer, he wanted to buy a case. And I'm going, brother, it's only 80 miles from Orlando from Tampa. He says, Oh, I need a case. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and he could pound them down, but the, a can of beer looked like a baby bottle in his hand. And, you know, he just, you're, you're talking about a legitimate, real deal giant. And he could just put any kind of anybody under a table. And I wasn't there, and but I'm not exactly sure how many cans, but it seems like it was over a hundred of Coors. And I think it was Las Vegas that he drank that, became a big legendary story, but I buy every bit, I buy every bit of it. Mm. I mean, you know, he, he could put alcohol away. Did you always team with Andre or did you, I think you teamed with Andre, did you? Did you ever wrestle Andre? Oh no, no, I never did. I mean, you know, I'd have made him look like a million dollars, but that would, would have been easy because he was a million dollars. Mm. But I was always partners with them when they would bring him in. And, you know, it's, it was a great shot in the arm for me, but it, it was a job. My job was to sell, get, let the heels get the heat on me and then give Andre the big hot tag. And that was my job. And there was, I, you know, I took pride in it. I mean, I was fortunate enough to not let my ego get out of, out of proportion. Like a lot of guys do. You don't choose whether you're a champion. You don't choose whether you win or lose. But if you're a humble person and you, you do your job, then that's how you're accepted. And whenever I was told to let somebody beat me, I didn't go, ah, I don't want them to beat me. I'm better than them. I would do it with grace and with pride and say, you know what? What do you want to do? I'm going to make you look better than anybody's ever made you look. Because that's what you're doing. And when it's, you're given that opportunity and somebody's doing it for you, you want them to react the same way. And so the idea is, is when you have to do something, do it. And when I was Andre's partner, it was pretty much go out there and do a few moves. They call it shine now, but they didn't call it that. It was just more getting over. And the baby face did a few moves and then boom, the heels actually healed, you know, Look, looked at the referee and did something behind his back. I mean, you know, I know that's not a part of anything now, but at the same time, the referees were utilized. So, yeah, I was blessed. And Andre, he was, he was, a, he was a great man.